Hi, this is Debbie at DebScraps.com. Today I'm going to do a basically new to me um, idea. I'm taking a card making class with my friend Colleen and we are learning how to do make use a stencil to decorate uh, back of a card or in my case I like this scrapbook so I'm going to use it for that. So this is a stencil and it's very thin and I'm going to decorate the page and we, we tried some different things last time because we did this once at the card class and then once at home. And at home we used Mod Podge which I'm trying to get you in the camera and then we used a paste, an embossing paste. And we got, got this at Michael's and found out that Mod Podge is much thinner than the paste and it still worked. Here is the Mod Podge and it, you can see its numbers and here is the paste and it still worked but the Mod Podge in some spots, these are butterflies, I don't know if you can see, um, but it sometimes it leaked under a little bit because it was thinner and it made the paper a little bit wavy from the thinness. And we did just let it dry clear. So when it dry cl dries clear, it just kind of makes a nice clear background that just stands out a little bit, just makes a little nice texture. I was actually going to try to put some embossing um, glitter on the number one I have here and I went and took put the embo embossing glitter on had my heat tool ready and the heat tool was broken so now I have a new heat tool and I couldn't quite get all the embossing glitter off so there's a little bit of gold embossing glitter there but anyways it still looks pretty neat especially since we're just trying things out so today we're going to use and make dots and I'm going to put on the embossing glitter and use my new heat tool and see how it turns out and let you see this new technique we're learning. The first thing we need to do is to use washi tape and tape down the edge of the stencil. That just makes it a little easier to make guarantee it doesn't move while we're using the paste. And I also um, thought that it, since I used the white paper it might show up a little easier on while I'm recording this. So that's why I'm using the white and I'm going to use a darker glitter. Alright, I should have got a new piece, different roll of washi tape because this one gave me a hard time a little bit ago and yet I picked that same <laughs> washi tape again. <laughs> you, what is it called when a person <laughs> repeats their mistake over and over again? <laughs> The definition of insanity. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so you don't need much. And the beautiful thing about washi tape, it's not only pretty, but as we're using it here, it's very functional because it won't tear your paper. And so it's a really a nice product to use, even if you aren't going to leave it on the page for decoration. All right, so. We no longer need the Mod Podge. I'm getting the glue, or the paste, and I have a putty knife. I got it in the art section at Hobby Lobby. And all you do is take a blop, a glop, or whatever you want to call it, of the paste and smear it over. Try not to get on the outside because you just really want circles. And try to make sure every hole is covered. Kind of looks speckly. <laughs> kind of like spackling. Now I just realized why it was a little easier on the blue paper or green paper that I used earlier and that is because you could actually see where the paste was going. With the white paper you can't really see where it spins as easily the white paste on the white paper. But just make sure it's thoroughly covered. You can put heavier and lighter coverings on the heavier covering, when you put a real thick covering, it takes a lot longer to dry. But the last time, it seemed to dry very quick, so. What I like to say about scrapbooking is I try my hardest not to make a mistake, but if I do well, a lot of times a sticker will cover it up or whatever, but 
I see that mistake a lot more than anyone else sees it. A lot of time, most of the time, other people don't even realize there was a mistake. And so we just try our hardest and enjoy the process. Because if you aren't enjoying it, there really isn't much point to it. All right, I'm trying to get off the excess and put it back into the jar as I go. Now, I have practiced and used this, temp used a template actually four different times. This one right after the other. But I'm just going to do it once right now. And then I'm going to, as soon as I get through embossing, I'm going to immediately wash it off because these are thin and fragile. I'm going to put my um, putty knife into the jar real quick and just lift it up and try to lift it away. And see how nice the washi tape came off and where it didn't come off. Um, you can just easily pull it off without damaging your paper. So let's look at it. I don't know if you can see it from up there. I'll pull it a little closer. I'm not sure if it's going to work too well for it to see it since it's white on white. Once I put the glitter on, you will be able to see it, I'm pretty sure. But most of the holes were very well covered. There's a couple along the edge right here. Oh, I can think we can see it there. But there's a couple along the edge that didn't quite take covering, but I think, it, like I said, it was white on white, so it's very difficult to see. But when I add that glue, it's, that glitter is really going to pop. So, what you do is you put a piece of scrap paper. I got a thin piece of white sheet of white paper to put underneath so I can catch extra glitter. And then I'm going to sprinkle lots and lots of glitter because I'm not going to waste it because I'm going to pour it back into the jar. Sprinkling it on, lots of it, dumping it. And I noticed I'd opened this jar once before, Colleen. Mm -hmm. And I noticed this time it was kind of clumpy. So I don't know, mm. even though the jar was closed all this time, because we have high humidity here, I don't know if that caused... South Carolina might, yeah. might have caused that humidity yeah. to make a clump. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't... I'd never seen glitter clump like that. All right, so I got tons of glitter on here, but that's okay. I'm not wasting it. Put Oh, I was going to put the lid back on, but that was a wasted effort. Now I'm going to take it. And I'm going to dump it onto this paper. Oh, look how Ooh. there's a few little spots, but it's going to be really cool. All right, I'm going to make sure that I try to get all the extra loose glitter off because I don't want it to stay there. Okay, now I last time I was at Hobby Lobby with my friend, we got this little neat thing. It catches the glitter and then it has a funnel to pour it back into your jar. So I'm going to pour it back in there. It's good for sequins too. Yeah, good for sequins or anything like that where you want to funnel it back in. Okay. And I lost a little bit of glitter, but not much at all. Okay, look at this. There's my jar and it just goes right back in. It's amazing. Um, there before I just curled the paper up and it worked but this just works a little bit better mm -hmm. all right I'm trying to get it all in all right look it's the jar is still so full all right here we go I'm putting the lid on so it doesn't end up blowing whenever I do the heat gun now here's my new heat tool and I'm gonna, it, it has a low setting and a high setting. The low setting is set as for drying ink and the high setting is for the embossing. So we're gonna do the high. I'm gonna try not to talk in case you can't hear me. Whenever you emboss, you can see the color change in the glitter, the embossing glitter. And right here, you can the, you can see that this portion has changed. It's a different shade. So that is done, whereas the rest of it isn't quite done. But you can 
imagine how pretty this is going to be. And that stencil effect is just so neat. And then with the clear, you can use it as a clear, just a very mild background. So that is what we're showing you today. And I think it's going to be something that I use quite frequently on my page, especially when I get more stencils. I, I have several, but um, when one applies to what my page is going to be about. So anyways, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you. Please join me on my blog at debscraps.com and God bless.